Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I just got these socks in from J. Crew, and I just wanted to kind of do an unboxing video because I realize I've actually never really talked about socks in any of my content. This is one of my consumer hacks that I do every year. So every year after Christmas, I go on the J. Crew website, and typically they just have killer deals on socks. So I picked up these 10 socks. The total was about 80 bucks. Now I know what you're thinking, $80 on socks, but yes, each one of these is at least $15 full price. And so for example, heavyweight camp socks, these camp socks are some of my favorites. Uh, these literally last years, in fact, you can't wear these out <laughs> no matter how hard I've tried. I've had some camp socks, these marled cotton type socks for literally, I wanna say 10 years and, I, and I'm still wearing them, like I'm not making it up. So yeah, so these were originally 20 bucks full MSRP, marked down to 11. Anyways, bottom line, I got these for about probably $7 because they do the 60% off plus, they mark the price down from 20 to 12 and then 60% off that. So when I see these, uh, these are the same ones, just in a different color. When I see these, I just grab them up in every single color, because why not? You know, variety is the spice of life and since they're going on sale, you might as well grab them. This is a good opportunity to, to discover your style, discover what works for you, what doesn't. Um, so, you know, if I were to see these on the rack, for example, this is like a mixture of like marled greens, earth tones, got a yellow stripe, a blue stripe. You know, this might not have been something that I traditionally gravitated towards, but since it's so affordable, I can, you know, afford to take the risk, check them out, see if I like them, see if maybe green is my color. And as time goes on, you know, with boots, it turns out green is my color. This is an easy color to pull off, gray, blue, yellow, gray and blue specifically. But yeah, this is another one of the camp socks. Uh, these were all made in, made in South Korea. So that's pretty cool. That's a new one you don't typically see stuff from J. Crew sourced in South Korea, at least not that I've noticed recently. But yeah, I figure, you know, as much as I talk about boots, I should talk about the number one accessory that goes with boots. Nice socks, right? It's, it's not something that gets talked about a lot. Um, chup socks are pretty famous for our level of niche artisan boots that we wear. The, uh, chup socks are typically about $30, $35. J. Crew also sells those. I'll talk about those in a second. So these are actually J. Crew Lamb's Wool Fair Isle socks, J. Crew brand originally $25, marked down to 10. Okay, so yeah, so I'm looking at the price sheet now. Yeah, so it looks like each camp sock I got for $7, $6.99. So this would have been $6.99 as well. Pretty good deal on $20 socks. This is another marled cotton camp sock, $6.99, boom. So that, that does it for the four marled cotton camp socks from J. Crew. originally $20 a pair. So this is $80 worth of socks right here at full MSRP. I got each one for $6.99. About 28 bucks for these. Really good deal. So you see why I hold out till the end of the sale, till the end of the season to grab those. Now let's move on to the J. Crew Lamb's Wool Fair Isle. I believe I got three J. Crew Lamb's Wool Fair Isle. So I got these three colors. So this is navy and red striped, green, and navy striped and then gray with some notes of burgundy in there and green in there so each of these were originally $25 after all the discounts I got the lamb's wool socks for $8.99 a piece so 25 so that's $75 worth of socks and I got it for about 27 bucks so there you go pretty good deal and again this is why I hold out so here's some Wallace and Barnes Wallace and Barnes is a brand that J. Crew likes to feature a lot. These are also made in South Korea for $25. So yeah, these came down to about, I wanna say nine bucks as well. So again, fantastic deal. Let's open these up. Rib socks, lamb's wool blend. I love the packaging on those. It's got a neat Wallace and Barnes insignia there. Wallace and Barnes, like an aqua blue and a brown. And I just love the marled, that chunky marled appearance. That's what I love. I love sweaters in that as well. All right, here are some J. Crew Nordic wool blend socks. Full price, $25. And I got these for $11, $10.99. 
a little bit more adventurous of a look going on with these with the mountains on there. I think they look pretty sweet. Same story with these J. Crew Nordic Wool Blend. Nordic Wool Blend socks, yeah. Originally 25. Same price as the other ones. So. And I like this one, the yellow with the blue, the green and the yellow stripes at the top. Pretty inventive. All right, and so I would be doing a disservice if I didn't show what some of these are gonna age like. So with my experience, I mentioned I mentioned that the camp socks, so these, these are some camp socks that I've had for probably two, three years. And these are the cotton marled camp socks. So they're gray marled with or orange and white throughout. But yeah, these hold up literally phenomenally. Like there's, there's basically nowhere on these. Like these literally have another decade in them at least. This is what I would consider a thick sock. So these I wear with like my, my generously fitting boots, like my Vibergs and my Aldens and my Grant Stones, but typically just Alden and Viberg because those boots, just the way that I sized, th this is the best type of a sock. The, the heavyweight, thick cotton sock. They hold up the best. They're not, they are not, however, the best for insulation. They basically have no insulation, but they're excellent at absorbing, absorbing moisture and, and durability and comfort. Comfort in terms of moisture absorption. Now, let me get into some of the benefits of the wool socks. So these are J. Crew wool socks, Fair Isle, about five years old. And there are, there's a lot of advantages, but a lot of disadvantages as well that people might not know about. One of the disadvantages is they don't last as long as cotton. You get a lot of pilling. I don't know if the camera can capture this, but you get a lot of pilling on the J. Crew wool socks. And the thing to understand about wool is 100% wool is you're gonna take on all the benefits, but all the, all the disadvantages as well of wool. So yeah, so you get a lot of pilling coming off. That's, that's normal, which means that they're not going to last as long. But one of the benefits of wool is that it is extremely good at insulating and it insulates even when, you're, uh, when it gets wet. So that's a major, major advantage to wool. But the disadvantage is that it's just not as durable. So here are some J. Crew wool socks. And I don't know if you can see here, but this is where my heel goes. And I've actually, I don't know if you can tell, but I've had to do an amateur stitch job to hold this together because the wool just wears through so quick. You see my finger through there. And so while it does offer advantages in terms of insulation and comfort, the wool is a lot more comfortable to stand on compared to cotton. Cotton doesn't give you as much support. So yeah, I've talked about this before. The same way that a leather sole offers really, really good comfort and support to your body for like all day standing, think of the wool sock as the, as the sock version of that. The, the most comfortable, like if you're gonna be standing up all day in the cold, like let's say that you're like a guard outside the, <laughs> outside the Queen's Castle and you're standing up in the winter time manning the gates all day, then what you want is a leather sole <laughs> and wool socks. That's what you want. If you want the seriously like best comfort combination, you want wool and leather. Now, if you want to go the opposite, the opposite end of the spectrum on that, you could go with a, a lot. Now see, a lot of guys would tend to go with something like this, like a toothy lug commando sole. Now that will give a lot of anti-slip ability. And then guys would also tend to reach for a thick cotton sock to go with that. Now that's good. That's fine. That's going to do the job, but the cotton isn't going to insulate and it's not going to be as comfortable to stand on. Same with the rubber. The rubber is not going to be as comfortable to stand on all day. The more leather and wool between your feet and the ground, the more comfortable it is, <laughs> if that makes sense. The, the trade-off with the leather and the wool, however, is the leather doesn't last as long and the wool won't last as long either. Both are gonna be more, more prone to wearing down, whereas the rubber will resist the wear down, especially in wet and abrasive surfaces. The leather will tend to wear down depending on how you walk. I don't believe that leather soles are nearly as delicate as a lot of people think that they are, but 
if you are walking around in the rain on the pavement all the time, yeah, you're going to wear them down. And same with same with the wool. The wool will wear down, especially as your heel sort of goes up and down inside the boot. That's where you're going to get that's where you're going to get this effect, right? I, in fact, I, I probably need to stitch this again. In fact, some might say that it's just time to throw these away, but I, I like to ride these out. I like to, you know, when something's on its last leg, I like to actually kind of push it and just see how much further I can take it. Here's the other one. So I did a lot better job stitching this one together. It's not pretty, it's very mangled. So I'm not a good, I'm not a pro fabric stitcher, but as you can see, it's it's still holding together. Yeah, this area is a lot thinned, is very thinned out though. Especially what, what's gonna cause that, that wearing down is, all right, so for example, these boots, these Grant Stones and Saddle Tan Veg, and see, there's a good lining on the back of that. Good smooth lining. And so with that smooth, I think that's lambskin lining. But the lining on the inside of that boot is essentially going to um, prevent abrasion from happening with the sock as you put the, as you slip your sock in it's smooth whereas say on a pair of these thorough good roofers you can see th these are actually unlined and because of that it's going to it's going to create more abrasion between your sock and the leather wearing down the sock more and another boot that i really noticed that in are my viberg service boots brown chrome excel and let's see if the camera can capture that. Yeah, so you can see in there, that is not smooth. That is unlined leather. I'm trying to capture that as best as I can. And yeah, again, every time you step in, it's gonna create abrasion because that sock is, is rubbing up against that rough out on the inside. So that's one thing to keep in mind in terms of wearing your socks. So that's another reason why I like to wear these marled cotton socks because they don't wear down nearly as much against an unlined boot, the rough out on the inside. Whereas the wool definitely does. And I've worn these a lot with my Vibergs and I think that my Vibergs are, take a lot of the blame in wearing these wool socks down. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then this is an iconic pair actually. So, so th this is a pair that I wanted to use as an example as to why not all wool wears down. Now this, these are some chup socks from, I want to say like seven years ago, like 2015 and yeah, 2014 or 2015, a lot of guys bought this sock because it's just a really cool looking sock. These are chups. Now these are wool blends. So they've got cotton, they've got nylon, they've got elastane. I forget the exact composition of each one, but these really high uh, grade Japanese made socks, the chups and, uh, there's another brand too, I forget the name. The, these, this is also a chup as well. So these were originally like $35 socks. Now I also got these for probably 12 bucks from a J. Crew sale. And yeah, these do contain wool, but it's probably only about 20% wool. So they don't have nearly the amount of wear on the back heel. It's got a lot of cotton, a lot of, lot of nylon, some elastane, some other stuff in there too. So by mixing it, by blending it, it creates more durability. Whereas the 100% wool, 100% lamb's wool, is not gonna offer that same amount of durability. I believe these are 100%, let me see if it says anywhere. It just says lamb's wool blend. Okay, yeah, this says lamb's wool blend. But in essence, what it comes down to is the amount of, of wool in the sock. Now these are also chups. Yeah, chup socks. But literally the same time as these, so they're literally just as old and I've had to restitch them several times. Why? Because a different percentage of wool is in here. I think there's more wool than cotton. So this one might be like a lot, like, you know, 50% wool, or maybe even 70% wool and they blend in some other stuff in there. It just depends on the ratios, the blends, but, but in my experience, the more wool, the more prone it is to breaking down over time. Now that said, the wool itself does offer a lot of advantages. Yeah, you can see here I've stitched stitched that back shut. So yeah, I, I didn't wanna draw this video out too long, um, but I just kinda wanted to give my insights into different types of socks because I do get the question from time to time, like, you know, hey, where do you get your socks? And believe me, when you spend as much money on boots as 
I do, you wanna make sure you're getting good deals on everything else. This is where I skimp. I skimp on the socks. I've got three sock drawers full of these types of socks. And yeah, that's been my that's been my experience. I've had I have good things to say about all of them, really. <laughs> so <laughs> and bad things to say. So, you know, with every advantage comes a disadvantage. There is no perfect boot sock. Um, if you wanted to just be lazy and get the best possible bang for your buck, it's gonna be these cotton marled camp socks. These are gonna last you forever, but you're not gonna get the comfort and you're not gonna get the insulation. So if you're going camping somewhere, for example, that's really cold, you're doing yourself a huge disservice by taking cotton. In that situation, you want something like this. You want something with a lot of wool in it. You know, especially if you're sleeping outside, I can't imagine taking cotton. You want something with wool. You want something that's gonna insulate and, and trap that heat, preserve your, your body from losing heat. So yeah, wool, it will wear down quicker, but if you're going camping for a week, it doesn't matter how quick the wool wears down, you need that insulation. But if you're going camping, say in the spring, well, bring the cotton and it'll keep working for you for years and years. So another big advantage to the cotton camp socks is that you can wash them like normal. You can wash them in high heat in the washer and then dry them in high heat in the dryer. And they literally just never change form. They, they literally just snap back to their original form, which is a huge advantage. Whereas obviously with wool, anything, especially wool socks, you definitely don't want to put them in the dryer. So all wool socks have to be hang dried. I usually hang them up on my steps, on my stairs, on the uh, railing there, and they dry really quick. They're, the moisture wicking ability of wool is so incredible. It wicks its moisture in about less than 24 hours, probably more like 10, 12 hours. They're completely dry. That's just in the room temperature, which is really great. And one reason why wool is like that, the reason why you can't dry wool is not because it actually shrinks. People think it shrinks, but actually what's happening is the best way to conceptualize wool is the fibers of wool are kind of like Velcro. And so the more that the dryer agitates the wool, the more that it sort of folds in over on itself. And so it doesn't shrink. It actually just gets more and more compacted. The wool sweaters and wool socks, they don't shrink, they get compacted. So they seem to shrink, but they don't lose material. They'll lose size, but they'll just become very much compacted. That's why you kind of got to be careful. It could happen to a very, very small degree in the wash as well. That's why I do gentle wash in the washing machine. Now I've had great success washing my wool socks in cold water in the washing machine over the years. The only trouble that I've had with wool socks are the cheaper wool socks. So for example, sometimes I shop at the J. Crew outlet online. They also sell wool socks. And what's interesting is that they list it as 100% genuine wool and everything. But the problem is there is not all wool is created equal. And so the J. Crew standard J. Crew shop is gonna sell premium wool at a higher price. And then, so yes, when you go to the J. Crew outlet store, it's still wool, but it's just a lower grade wool. It's got more of a dry feel to it than that nice, silky, smooth feel that the premium J. Crew wool socks have. The outlet wool, I find, is just a lower grade. It's just lower in quality. And it's just, it's not as strong. It's not as luxurious of a feel. And then, so part of the issue with that as well, since it's a lower grade, it, since it's a lower quality, it will tend to pill a lot more. It'll tend to rip a lot more. It'll tend to shrink way more. Not all wool is created equal. That's something that I learned as well. So yeah, but definitely when you are caring for your wool socks, definitely wash them on cold in the washer and then hang dry them. I probably don't need to emphasize that very much. I, I assume most everybody knows this, but it is true. Now, some people say that, oh, you should only dry clean your wool socks. I don't agree with that. I very much think that you can wash them in the washing machine, similar to denim. You can wash denim in the washing machine. Just make sure you do it on gentle and cold, um, but you're not gonna actually shrink it unless 
you throw it in the dryer. That's where the damage really happens with wool and denim is in the dryer. And that, well, that's all where all the shrinkage happens as well. So you don't want that to happen, obviously. <laughs> all right, and then one trick that I do, now this is, this is me, this isn't everybody, I'm sure, but the first time you open up your socks and you're gonna roll them up like this, that's what I do. You'll notice you get a lot of these strands, these stray strands sticking out. Now I'm neurotic about getting rid of bulk. I really like carrying around just as much as material, just as much material as I absolutely need to. So some people might have an objection to this, but I actually take some shears and I just snip, I snip these loose ends off. Now, if they're connected, I don't, but if they come loose, I do. So snip some of that. I'll just go through. Now I realize I'm only getting one sock here. So the next time I wash them, and I'm, and I'm uh, rolling them back up, putting them back in the drawer. I might do this, you know, several times over the life of the sock. So if I, if, I, if I have the sock inside out and I notice I got a lot of these loose strands, I'll go through and I'll just, I'll snip. And, uh, you know, I'm not overly neurotic about it. Like if I just see it, I'll just take that and snip the excess, you know. I've never had a sock unravel on me before in all the probably seven, eight years I've been doing this. I just do it to get rid of a little extra material, walk around with a little less material on me because I, I just don't like bulk. But yeah, you can see I got I got all that off. One sock, no, I didn't do the other one, like I said. This is just something I do, I've, I've, I always have shears near me and as I'm doing my laundry and I notice excess, I just go ahead, snip that off. So, boom. So that much less stuff you got to carry around with you on the on the day to day. It wouldn't seem to make that big of, of a difference, but it's ju it's just a discipline I've uh, I've adopted and it's worked out for me so far. Like I said, again, I've never once had a sock unravel on me because of this. I know some people might say, "Oh, well, yeah, but you might be cutting a sealed off thread." Now, in this case, I don't see any, but again, it's not completely inside out. So, when they're completely inside out, when the sock's completely inside out, then you'll see all of it. Now in this one, there's none. This is a really well done Wallace and Barnes. Oh, there you go. Wallace and Barnes. Yeah. They're thorough. They get, they shave off all the excess. They're not lazy. They don't cut corners. <laughs> Wallace and Barnes is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. That that proves it right there. <laughs> so, kudos Wallace and Barnes. No need to shear that. And yeah, these. I wonder. I half wonder if these are. This is the J Crew brand Nordic. Yeah, these look pretty good. Uh, you got that. Uh, see, uh, see this. This is an. This is a piece of the elastic, and it's. Uh, it's still a complete thread, so that's probably going to absorb back into the sock. It's stuff like this that I'm looking for. And see, these are these are pretty well done. These are pretty short. I don't need to cut that. I, I'm not seeing a whole lot of excess. I could chop that if I wanted, but I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm what I'm talking about chopping is stuff that's like crazy on the inside of this. Yeah. See this. This one's or chop worthy. I'll just go through and snip. Clean that up a little bit. Got a good amount of excess there, just snip. I realize this isn't the most exciting subject, but these are just practices that have worked for me over the years. And I like to share. I did start doing this out of necessity, actually. I'll tell you why. This didn't come out of a sudden impulse. I had a pair of, I think it was American Eagle. They were camp socks, super high quality cotton, but similar to something like this. And every time I put my foot in there, it would get like caught in loops of excess thread, right? It's like, that's not good. So it was, it was like this on steroids, like, 
Like it was like this, but they'd be loops and they were like huge like this. And so your toe would get stuck in there and it was the worst. So I went in and I'm like snipping all this stuff off. And I thought, how, how many other of my socks have this going on? And so I started checking and sure enough, I found some of, you know, most all brand socks that I had, had, had the, had that excess on the inside. So that's, that's when I started cutting and I'm like, oh yeah, these, these feel lighter after chopping a little bit of mass out of them. So that's why I do that. You don't have to, please let me know if you have any input on that. If you have positive or negative experiences, like I said, I've never once seen a negative, a downside to chopping off those excess threads that just got away that they're literally just waste and uh they're not they're not supporting anything they're not supporting the structure of the sock or anything like that you know they're literally just loose threads so that's just my two cents please leave me your thoughts in the comments below um this isn't the most exciting subject i know but i felt the need to cover it because as a boot collector we need to know where to get the best accessories and the socks are your boot accessory. So you need to know the best time and the best place to get them. In my experience, J. Crew has been my go-to. They've, be, thanks to them, I buy about between 10 and 12 pair of these socks every year. So I've got drawers just loaded with them and I didn't spend a whole lot to get them. So I've got a really good variety and just that, that's just my strategy just every year just go back check the j crew sales section in fact check the j crew sales section at the end of each season and you will see they've got a lot of cool stuff that you can get with the discount plus the additional percentage off discount which in this case an extra 60 percent off so it brought you know all these new socks down this is probably three four hundred dollars worth of socks that i got for 80 bucks so it's just something to keep in mind. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Leave me your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see y'all in my next video.